Thanks, Alan. Um, Christy, could you share your screen? Hi, everyone. Welcome to the third LPC meeting for the Ossining Downtown Revitalization Initiative. We're just going to wait a couple moments so that um, a few more LPC members can join us. Hi, Bill. How are you? Oh, we can't hear you. You see, we've had a couple of other folks join us as well. Um, welcome to LPC um, meeting three. Was that you, Bill? I don't know why, but it says that I'm Thomas Carey. I am not Thomas Carey. Okay, we can um, change that. Who are you? I'm Peter Chernoff, Peter, uh, C H E R N O F F. Yep. I, I'll get that fixed right now. Thanks. Hey, Peter, we're just giving folks a couple more minutes to join before we get started. Can you see me or hear me? We can see and hear you, Brent. Excellent. And Bill, uh, your showing is unmuted in Zoom, but we weren't hearing you earlier. I don't know if you can try to can say you hear hi. me now? Yes, we can. Great. Great. Progress. Okay, we're at 12.05. Should we go ahead and get started? Yep, I think that's safe to do. Okay. Okay, Christy, when you're ready, we can get started. Okay, here we go. Oh, of course my light shut off right before <laughs> I meant to talk. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Catherine Zanell. I'm a, uh, an urban planner with BHB. We have been brought on by the New York State Department of State to support the Village of Ossining's downtown revitalization initiative planning process. Um, welcome again to the third meeting of the local planning committee. Here is an agenda for what we hope to cover in the next approximately two hours. 
um, we'll do some introductions so that the LPC members can uh, say hello. We'll review conflicts of interest and recusal disclosure. We will quickly touch base on where we are in the DRI planning process. And then we are going to dive into the preliminary project list. We are hoping to spend the majority of our meeting today talking about the 16 proposed projects that came in through the call for projects. Then we'll speak briefly about project evaluation criteria and our next steps. And we'll allocate at least 15 minutes for public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, so if you would like to make a comment and you're a member of the public, there are a few ways to do that. You can use the raise hand function in Zoom. You can use star nine if on the telephone. And there's also a Q&A box where you could write in your question or comment. If you submit a question or raise your hand during the presentation, know that we'll see it, but we will hold on addressing it until the public comment session, which will begin at 1.45. We've disabled the chat function during the meeting to reduce pop-ups and distraction, um, and a friendly reminder that this meeting is being recorded. All right, so let's try and do a round of introductions. Um, I can facilitate those introductions. Um, I'll first pass it to my colleague, Christy, and then I'll go through the list of LPC members and our partners in New York State. Christy? Hi, everyone. My name is Christiana Kastelak. I am the deputy project manager working alongside with Catherine, and I'm an environmental planner at VHB Engineering. Great, thank you. Um, I'll turn it over next to Susan and then to Josh. Um, Susan Lanfried, I am the project manager from the Department of State for the Austin NBRI. I wasn't ready. Um, Josh, Sorry, Josh. <laughs> um, Coastal Resources Specialist with New York State Department of State. Okay, great. Um, Tom, would you like to say hi? And then followed by Eric. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Scaglioni, Regional Director for Empire State Development in the Mid-Hudson Region. And yes, we'll turn it over to my colleague, Eric Warren. Eric Warren, Senior Project Manager, Empire State Development. Thank you. Great. Is there anyone else from the state who I may have missed? Okay, hearing none, I'll shift over to our LPC members who are in Alphabetical order by first name. <laughs> Brent Glass. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Bill Balter, then Brent Glass. Hi, I'm Bill Balter uh, from Wilder Balter Partners. Uh, we're uh, developing the redeveloping with the village, uh, the former DPW property, and uh, we are excited to be a part of this. Thanks. Hello, Brent. I'm Brent Glass, uh, executive director of the Sing Sing Prison Museum. Great. Also okay. excited to be part of this. Oh, it turns out my my list is a little out of order, so I'll go uh, to Malita next, and then to Trustee. Hi, hello, good afternoon. I am Malita Silva, owner of Malita Farm in Austin, Main Street. Thank you. Um, my turn. Yes. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Dana White. I'm a trustee for the Village of Austin. Great. Thank you. Um, next up, I have Erica and then Jeff. Hi, my name's Erica Boach. I am a landscape restorationist, restoration specialist for New York City. I am the former chair of the Village Environmental Advisory Council, and I'm really happy to be included in this process. Thank you. Great. Uh, yes, hello everyone. I'm, I'm Jeff Shoemaker. I am an urban designer, urban planner, and resident of the Village of Osnick. All right, thank you. Next up, I have Joyce and then Kim. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joyce Sherrod Cole. I am the Austin Village Historian and a lifelong resident of Austin. Glad to be here. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Jacobs. I'm a longtime community development practitioner and a longtime Austin resident. I'm thrilled to be here. Great, thank you. Um, I have Marlene and then Peter. Hello, my name is Marlene Cheatham. I am a former trustee slash mayor for the Village of Osning. I now sit as the chair of the zoning board for the Village of Osning, and I am a longtime resident of the Village of Osning. It is a pleasure to be with everyone today. Hi, I'm uh, Peter Chernoff, an Osning homeowner and uh, developer in Osning. And, um, kind of pretty much completely focused on the village center. So very interested in being involved. And hope that we're gonna do something great here. Okay, and I think the last LPC member I have is Seth. Hi, I'm Seth Roy, I'm an architect. I'm also the chairperson of the village planning board and architectural review board. So happy to see you all. All right, is there any LPC member who I have missed? Okay, hearing none, we'll, we'll keep moving. All right, Susan, can I turn it to you for conflicts of interest? Sure, so on behalf of the mayor and Dr. Gordon, our co-chairs, I'll just uh, read the preamble regarding the conflict of interest. Um, each local planning committee member is reminded of their obligation to disclose potential conflicts of interest with respect to any of the projects that may be discussed today. If you have a potential conflict of interest regarding a project you believe will be discussed during the meeting, please disclose it now and recuse yourself from any discussion or vote about that project. For example, you may state that you or a family member have a financial interest in the project, or you are on the board of an organization proposing the project. Do any members need to make a disclosure? Yes, I do. Um... The Sing Sing Prison Museum is a project that will be discussed and I'm the executive director. I may also be uh, some interest that we at the, as a museum have in the Olive Opera House. So uh, that's a project that um, I don't have a direct interest in, but may in the future. Thank you. Hi, uh, it's Bill Balter. There are two projects that I want to disclose. Uh, the DPW redevelopment that we're working on uh, is not a DRI project, but there is uh, a proposed project on the open space land that we're creating that could involve DRI funds. Uh, the second is that I was asked to uh, be on a call relating to Market Square, just to give my professional thoughts on various things there. So I was on that call as well. Thank you. Anyone um, else? Yeah, I, I was on that same call that, that, that Bill Balter was on. Um, I also see that that Austin Arts Council has proposed um, sculpture along the Sing Sing Kill. Um, I, I own a fair amount of the land along the Sing Sing Kill at that point. So I guess it does impact me. Um, but I'm... Um, I'm not, wouldn't be directly benefited from it and uh, actually would be willing to sign whatever paperwork would be required for easements, et cetera. Okay. All right, thank you all very much. Um, and then if you note that if a need to disclose a conflict arises during the meeting, um, please at that point recuse yourself from discussion or voting on that project and um, please inform me or the rest of the committee or the co-chairs um, at that point. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, okay, so before we dive into the preliminary project list, we wanted to share this slide to show our progress through the DRI planning process. Um, here we are at LPC meeting three. Um, at LPC meeting one, we met virtually and discussed the DRI program. Um, at LPC meeting two, we met in person and discussed feedback from community meeting one uh, and took a walking tour of the DRI area. Um, and now at meeting three, we're going to dig into the preliminary project list. And at meetings four and five, we will continue to refine that list with the goal of recommending a slate of projects 
uh, to the state for DRI funding at meeting six. Um, so that's where we are in the process. You'll see that um, a number of our deliverables have been completed, the vision goals and strategies, the public engagement plan, the downtown profile and assessment, um, that we still got to circulate that. And we're now beginning work on project profiles and the draft strategic investment plan, which pulls all of these pieces mm -hmm. together. I think maybe, okay. I was gonna to pause to see if folks had any questions about where we were in the overall process before we move on. I have, I have one question. So sure. I was, uh, a couple of years ago, I was on the Peak Skill DRI committee. And when the projects were presented there, they were typically presented by the project sponsors. Um, is that how you're doing it here? Or are you, are you doing it as the consultant doing the overviews? We are doing it as the consultant, uh, providing the overviews of the projects, yes. So then how are you, are you getting the information from the sponsors on an ongoing basis? For example, yeah. in Peekskill, when a project sponsor would present their project, questions came up that needed to get answered between that and the next meeting. And you know they would go and work with the consultants and come up with answers. And then they would sort of, they and the consultant at the next meeting would sort of talk about it. It was a way of evolving the projects so that they got meatier and meatier as the meetings went on. And by the time they got the, the panel got to voting on projects, they really had a very good sense from the sponsors with you know the guardrails being the consultants to sort of help everyone to get down the tracks correctly. But by the time everyone was voting, everyone felt knowledgeable about it. So it, it sounds like you're not doing it that way here. No, we, um, we are taking a similar approach in that over time, we expect the projects to get, you know, as you said, meatier and meatier, right? Um, so that folks are are comfortable and have a, a comprehensive understanding of each project um, by June, when we'll ask folks to, to put a slate of projects forward for funding. Um, we have been um, assuming that the consultant team would be reaching out to project sponsors between meetings to collect additional information and distribute it to the LPC. Um, I will share that a number of the projects are sponsored by the village, and we are joined by um, Karen DeTori, the village manager, um, and I know that other village staff are, are tuning into this call. Um, so we do have an opportunity to be speaking with project sponsors, starting with the village and, and including others. Um, but we're hoping, particularly for this meeting where we have 16 projects to, to get through that will take note of questions and then bring that information to the project sponsors and circulate um, answers between meetings. Okay. And also to add to that, we have also began reaching out to some project sponsors just to start some preliminary questions to flesh out budgets, um, things like that to start. And then, as you said, as we get into the process, we definitely will be reaching out to sponsors more frequently just to grow their applications and have the most material that we can. Okay. I mean, it sounds fine for now. In, in my experience, the most passionate people about the projects are the project sponsors. And if us as panel members have questions, it seems not that efficient to sort of write them down and wait till the next meeting to get answers because we have a deadline to finish. It just feels like it's not the richest way to have a conversation, but I of course defer to you guys. You're the experts. Yeah, we, we hear you. And, and I think we as a team could consider engaging directly with project sponsors in future meetings to, to okay. sort of cut down on the back and forth that you identified. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay, other questions? Looks like Brent has his hand raised. Thank you. Yeah, somewhat along the lines of what Bill raised, um, I guess as a, as a historian, I'm interested, since we're round five of this uh, DRI process, um, are there best practices or best results or model uh, or case studies, model um, examples as we go forward that would help us as we uh, select projects or try to integrate the different proposals with the overall goals. And are you able to share that so that you you can, I mean, each each town is 
different and each circumstance is different. I understand that, but there may be some, some uh, wisdom that you've uh, accumulated over the years that would be useful for us to know. How, what, how the outcome has been, what has, what has revitalized, what's been the best tool to revitalize a community. And, and I understand each town is different, but just be useful to know that. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I, again, I think that's something we can bring back to the team. I know that um, folks on the on the state side have been a part of multiple um, DRI planning processes. Uh, Marsha Gordon, our co-chair, um, has similarly been a part of multiple processes. And our firm, VHB, has been a part of um, other DRI uh, planning processes, including at um, in New Rochelle most recently, and also at Peekskill before that. Um, so yeah, that's something that I think we can uh, pull together some information on and circulate. And I see Josh, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, our smart growth director, Paul Beyer, has been working on exactly that. Um, and he's compiled a number of case studies from various DRIs across the state and um, other, of our, other state programs. And they are available on the Department of State website. Um, so they are kind of the, the best best case scenarios. Um, and uh, so I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the chat to that. Awesome. Thank you. I see Kim has a hand raised. I do. Um, can you let us know, Catherine, when we might expect the downtown profile and assessment? Because I think obviously we want to weigh these projects in that context. Yes. Yeah. And we had hoped to share that prior to this meeting. Um, we will be sharing it prior to LPC meeting four. Yeah, I think for this meeting, we felt like with 16 projects, we wanted to make as much time as possible to, to discuss each of them. Okay, hearing no other questions, I think we can move forward. All right, so for the preliminary project list, if we go to the next slide. Um, as mentioned, in June, the LPC will be asked to select a slate of potential DRI projects. Those will then be submitted to the multi-agency state DRI program for final funding decisions. The state will award up to 9.7 million in DRI funding to the Village of Ossining and recommends that the LPC slate select a slate of process that, excuse me, a slate of projects that totals between 12 and 15 million. Um, so that provides some, some wiggle room in terms of the, the state award. Um, as today, the preliminary project list includes a total of 12.5 million in DRI funding requests. Um, so we are in that sweet spot. Um, however, it's, it's worth noting that we, we very much expect those costs to increase as we refine project budgets and work with project sponsors to, um, to include additional potential costs. Um, so the goal for today's meeting is to provide an overview of the preliminary project list, uh, can consider if projects would be transformative or catalytic for downtown Austining. That's really the, the purpose of the DRI program. And also to understand what information the LPC will need to evaluate these projects beyond what we already have. Um, so prior to our next meeting, VHB will solicit information from project sponsors and also offer technical assistance where appropriate to help develop project information um, and then at our next meeting, which will be in about a month, we will present a refined project list and we'll ask you as LPC members to start evaluating the projects using established criteria. We'll come to those at the, at the end of the meeting. For now, we're, we're interested in, in sort of understanding at, you know, a high level whether projects have the potential to be transformative or catalytic. And I see that Peter has his hand raised. Yeah, um, I just, uh, I reviewed the spreadsheet that we were sent. Uh, apologies if I've missed it somehow. I, I don't see that the amounts 
of requested funding are listed. Am I wrong? You are correct. No, we okay. did not initially include the amounts. Um, and that, that was initially because we, we do think that the, the cost will increase for a variety okay. of reasons, you know, inflation, labor costs, supply chain issues, um, you know, what everyone I think is experiencing in some way today. Um, but we felt like for this presentation, it, it was helpful to include, to give folks a sense of scale um, between projects. So that information will be in this presentation. Okay, thank you. Sure, good catch. Okay, so prior to today's meeting, VHB made some initial determinations sort of on, on threshold issues for each project. Um, we determined whether the project was eligible for DRI funding. Um, you may recall that at LPC meeting one, we discussed eligibility criteria. I'm going to bring up my notes. Eligible projects include public improvements, new development or rehab of existing structures, revolving loan funds, and branding and marketing campaigns. The sorts of activities that are not eligible include operation and maintenance, property acquisition, or training or other program expenses. So we did an initial pass to determine eligibility. We also did an initial pass um, to determine if projects were aligned with the DRA goals. You may remember that we developed goals around transportation and mobility, economic development, housing, and open space, recreation, arts, and culture. So we, we did initial pass and indicated where we thought there was alignment with those goals. Um, and we also made determinations around project readiness. So with the DRI program, it is important that projects be um, shovel ready, that they're able to move forward within two years of the award of funding. And so we took a look um, and indicated whether we felt a project was in the idea phase, whether it was in formation, or whether it was fairly fully formed. Um, we made this determination based on a couple of factors, which we'll discuss briefly as we go through each project. Um, but by way of preview, we asked, does the project sponsor have site control? So that goes to location. Is there a clear location? What is the status of project design? So that often goes to scope. You know, or is it clear what would be included within this project? Does the project have a cost estimate? We looked at budgets and budget breakdowns to try and understand how developed those may have been. And we asked if the project has any required permits or approvals, um, which could potentially you know, pose a hurdle in the future. Um, so we made those initial determinations. However, we're, we're very glad for LPC input and those will change over the course of, of the process. Um, and again, we're interested in hearing from you as to whether each project has the potential to be transformative or catalytic. Um, those can be rather general, right? And so as a starting point, we defined transformational as whether the project would significantly enhance downtown. We're looking for projects that would have a long-term significant impact. Um, in terms of catalytic, we're looking for projects that would attract other public or private investment. And that could be directly, right? It could be um, a project where there are both uh, public and private sources of funding, um, or it could potentially be indirect. Um, so yeah, this is sort of what we've laid out in terms of uh, project evaluation for the purpose of today's meeting. I do think I should pause there and see if folks have any questions and then we can get into the projects. Now, folks are eager to keep moving. <laughs> well, one, um, maybe, maybe after we review the projects, this might be easier to, to talk about. And that is um, the, the question of whether what is catalytic is whether 
it would the projects will bring outside investment so that Austining is more of a destination or whether it's that whether the projects are designed to increase uh, local um, enhanced lo local livability I guess on a day-to-day -day basis and it seems that that's an interesting and they're and they're not they're not totally separate but but it's just interesting to me to look at uh, how that and when we were on the walking tour I was also thinking about that um, of that there's certain projects that are definitely going to be more relevant to the the daily life of individuals in the in the village and other projects are more designed to bring in um, mostly tourist dollars or outside investment and that's just a a way of thinking about it and I don't I'm, I'll defer to the the village to see what the, what they think is the real goal of this particular DRI. Yeah, I think that that's a, a a good observation, and I think something that we we should continue to keep in mind as we discuss the the projects and the slate of projects. Right, it could be that we're looking for a mix. It could be that we want to strike a particular balance, um, and and I think yeah, we could consider. Um, in future meetings, as we sort of discuss what we mean by catalytic impact, whether it's you know bringing a new investment from outside the DRI area or outside the village of Ossining, or if it's you know attracting residents um, who already live in the DRI area or within the village to the downtown. It looks like Catherine yeah. Jeff has his yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Sorry. Just. Um, um, question on if there's, you know, I understand we have 16 projects. Um, there were a couple of others that were included in the initial application. So I guess the question is, is this the list that we have to work with? Or are there opportunities to potentially bring something back if we feel strongly that it should be included? Uh, obviously, we need to make sure the sponsor is comfortable with that. But, um, you know, is or is this the final list? Yeah, good question. Um, I will say that there were some projects that were included in the village's application that did not come through the call for projects. Um, and if there are particular questions as to why that may be, we can reach out to the village who, who compiled that application. I know, for example, in at least one instance, a project was, was funded. Um, and so, so it wasn't appropriate to also pursue DRI funding, for example. Um, but we can, we can take a look at those. Um, and to your, the second part of your question, like, is there an opportunity to add projects? Um, I think after taking a look at the list, if it feels like there are goals that were set that may not be met with this slate of projects, I do think there is room to consider other project ideas. Um, but while keeping in mind that, that it is a fairly tight turnaround um, and we have now about two months to really dig in and flesh these out. I hope that answers your question. It, it does, yeah. Thanks. Okay, cool. All right, so let's keep moving. Okay, so we're diving in. Um, Christy will take two projects and then I'll take two projects and um, we'll pause along the way for, for feedback and questions. Thank you, Catherine. So the first project that we're going to talk about is the streetscaping at Station Plaza. We received this proposal from the village and it's for streetscaping in the Station Plaza neighborhood, which includes Lower Main Street, Water Street, South Water Street, Depot Square and Quimby Street. The DRI funding request was for $350,000. The total project cost is $500,000. This project is eligible. And it aligns with both goals one, transportation and mobility, and goal four, open space, recreation, arts, and culture. For the next step in this pro and for this project to progress, we would want to refine the scope of work and the project budget with the village. Currently, the scope includes improving the streets, widening the sidewalks, and placemaking. But additionally, it also includes, as stated in the project description, that we need to clarify the other elements to consider, such as the electric car and bike charging stations and decarbonize, 
a decarbonization elements. So that's something that we're going to have to talk with the village to really hone in on what they want this project to focus on. And that would be refining the scope and then their project budget associated with those elements. So the first question that we would like to propose to you is, um, based off of this project, we would like to hear your thoughts on the potential for this project to be transformational or catalytic for downtown Austining. Thank you, Christy. We're glad for folks to, to jump in. Um, also happy to, to keep an eye out for raised hands, but happy for folks to jump in for discussion. And I apologize if I just spoke really quickly. <laughs> could slow it down moving forward. I, I'm happy to start off. This is Seth Roy. Um, so, you know, I, I like the idea of this project. I'm, you, we, you know, the planning board has reviewed a lot of projects in this area over the last year or two, two years. Um, there's, I think, a need to support, you know, especially sidewalks and and kind of calm traffic and, and and organize that area in a way that's that will they'll bring pedestrians down there. I think it it, it aligns a lot with the goals. I think my questions really are are. It, it's it's it seems kind of general you know general and vague in terms of what they're looking to do like like what does this look like you know where you know where and there are areas down there that have no sidewalks at all maybe are you know are there sidewalks that are could be put in front of those areas um i think so so big picture yeah i think that this is a i think this is a great idea i think it would be transformative to that area um but it, it'd be great to know more about it hi uh it's bill balter you know my sense of this project is it's a great idea it's probably not nearly enough money to do it. And I think that'll have that'll become evident as the scope of this get as it evolves. But it's a good example of something that in order to move it forward, we all really need to have a much better sense of what's included. And I think it should be more rather than less detailed as soon as possible. This is a kind of project that state will want to fund because it is both um, catalytic and transformational. Um, but I, and I think that in order for it to be viable, there needs to be a lot more meat on the bones than what we see right now. Thank you. I see hands from Kim, Peter, and Erica. Are you calling on me first, Catherine? I don't mean to jump the line here. No, go ahead. I, I would just agree with what's been said already. I guess um, one question I have is, is has the planning board, and, and Seth, I hope you can answer this, is there sort of a vision or a plan for this area that these improvements will complement? There, there is no, you know, plan or or organizing um, concept that the planning board has provided. No. Thanks, uh, Peter. Would you like to chime in? Not relative to this specifically, but since we have folks from the state on this call, I have brought this up before. I've attempted to contact elected officials and uh, the MTA. Um, we don't really have a train station. We do, but we have a guy selling a group coffee for a few hours in the morning. It's a lovely train station. It has a bathroom, but we can't go to it. And uh, when I see other places, I go, oh, look, it has a train station. When you arrive, you feel like you've arrived. Not in Austin. We have one broken down vending machine. Can we get the state, please, for the love of God, to put that thing to an RFP where we can get an operator in there who will do something there and be responsible for keeping it open and getting the bathroom clean and selling, I don't know what, pastries, donuts. Um, there are plenty of people out there who I, I swear will jump at it if it were ever made available. There is a realtor sign on the side of it from long ago um, when apparently it was put to an RFP predating Harbor Square, predating any, anything that would have made it interesting. And it's, it's never been um, looked at again. Um, Pleasantville has a whole restaurant at the train station. It's it's not even something that the that that we need funding for. They just have to put it out there. The train station's been redone. I'm sorry if I'm going on and on and on, but it's a very relevant part of this of this puzzle of yeah. you know arriving in Austin and what it feels like, and it's our front door. And what it feels like is, gee, is there even a bathroom in this place? Yeah. And the answer is okay. unfortunately no. 
Yeah. Okay, we can take that back. And, and I do think it connects to this project in that it's very near to the train station. Um, but we can take that back to the project team and, and try and understand better what, if anything, is happening so that it can uh, provide context for the planning for, for this, pro this project. Thanks. Okay, Erica. But specifically, if Ryan? someone from ESDC or somebody could simply prod the MTA to do an RFP for it, it would, I think, be well received and, and get us someplace there without even any funding. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. This is Erica. Yeah, I have to fully agree with Peter. It's, it's, you know, when we visit other river towns, like, for example, Cold Spring is really just a wonderful town. Um, and I do have to agree with a point uh, Brett made, uh, Brent made earlier, you know, is this, we, I know that Cold Spring does attract a lot of tourists um, because of its beautiful waterfront. And that's been, you know, good and bad. For, 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 you know, from the perspective of the residents of the village. Um, so I, you know, it's important for us to balance, to make sure that this money is um, first and foremost, improving the quality of life for the residents of Ossining. I think that should really be um, our fundamental goal here, not necessarily to um, pull, uh, you know, tourists and other folks, even though there is a benefit to that, of course, to, to the to the residents, I think it should be sort of an ancillary consideration for this particular grant. Um, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I noticed that one of the proposed projects was a community garden. And um, I've heard from a lot of folks in the village that they really would like to have a community garden that's um, accessible by foot. And I'm wondering if yeah. possibly you this could be combined uh, with you know, the streetscaping down there, if a space for a community garden could be found and, you know, more funding can be funneled into this if we do manage to get a community garden in there. Yeah, the community garden is next up. So yeah, we'll just put a pin in that thought. <laughs> Marlene? Um, I, I think I was kind of like just piggybacking on Seth, um, sitting on the zoning board. I know that there's a lot of issues, especially in this this current area, um, and I know that there are some projects coming up, and I don't, I don't see where the incoming projects are actually kind of roped into this, um, the streetscaping. So, is there a way as projects are moving forward, um, are they going to kind of morph into what's going on in this um, area? By incoming projects, are you? referring, for example, to the project at 30 Water Street? Um, there are some other projects going on in the Water Street area so that, you know, I know the 30 Water Street is one, but there are other Water Street projects, Main Street, pro Lower Main Street projects that are um, out in the zoning planning board bucket. So I wasn't sure, like, are those plans also part of, you know, looking at the streetscape, looking at, you know, how they will be buffered, looking at, you know, sidewalks and, you know, improvement to sewers and water lines and all that other stuff that will be coming yeah. down the pipe. My sense is that, you know, similar to, and, and perhaps even more importantly than any changes at the train station, the, the village would be considering projects for, for context when planning for streetscaping in, in this area, but we can circle back uh, and confirm that. Seth, I see you may want to jump in on that point. Yeah, I mean, because part, you know, part of it is while there are some larger projects that do require site plan reviews where, where I think there is some input that the village and we can have in terms of sidewalks and, and roads, there are also a lot of projects that are reuse of existing buildings where it may just be an architectural review, but you know, somebody's you know, investing in a building, but there is no opportunity, at least for, you know, for any of the village boards to, to say, you know, make the sidewalk wider or make this better. Um, so I think this project kind of fits there where it kind of takes the entire area and organizes it and, you know, kind of systematically rather than kind of lot by lot or, or area, you know, property by property. Got it. Okay, Erica, did you want to make another comment or should we flip to the community garden? I did, I did. I just okay. wanted to, um, I, I, when I was chair of EAC, we did review a number of projects in this area. Um, and there is a resource that I wanted to make the other folks on the call aware of called the Tree Equity Score. Um, and this is actually a GIS based tool where uh, based on tree canopy cover, uh, it's a social justice um, based 
tool as well. So, you know, trees provide a quality of life for the uh, improvement for the um, residents of the area. And this part of Austining actually has the lowest tree equity score of the whole entire village. Um, so I do think that um, improving, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a problem with climate change. Uh, it's a problem with uh, stormwater uptake. This area is prone to flooding. It's a low area. Um, it's a, a heat pocket um, for the folks that live down there. Um, so certainly if we could in some way um, get rid of some of the impervious surface and the, um, you know, constructed area and improve that with some uh, tree canopy coverage, I do think that that would, um, I, I do like the idea of that to help improve the quality of life for the residents in that area. Yeah, thank you for sharing that resource. Yeah, there are certainly real health impacts from urban heat island to um, you know, to, to air quality connected to tree canopy. Okay, cool. Um, all right, well, I think in the interest of time, we'll move on to the second project. Okay, so the next project is the community garden. We received a proposal for a community garden. A sponsor for this project and a location has not been identified to date. The project was submitted by ENU Build, a non for profit organization, and a preliminary budget was um, attached to the proposal for the DRI funding and the total project cost to be $37,000. And that DRI funding would be for the fencing, installation of a water source, a shed, and maintenance. The project is eligible and aligns with goal four, open space, recreation, arts, and culture. However, for this project to progress, we would need to identify a project sponsor and a location, as well as refine the scope of work and the project budget. So with that, is this a, transform a transformative or catalytic project? And what is your feedback in terms of what we've been presented to date? Anyone, any thoughts, any feedback? Yeah, my only question is, isn't uh, this project as presented doesn't sound like it's transformative or catalytic. So in order for it to be viable, doesn't it have to be proposed in a way where it is? For example, our board, as you're asking, our committee would have a hard time, I think, at this point saying it's either catalytic or transformative. So whoever the sponsor is would have to work with you. That's again, why if a sponsor were on the phone, they could try to explain to us why it's catalytic or transformative, but as you've presented it, I don't think it's either. The proposal that was submitted for this project was more of a proposal, very high level, more of this is something that the, the community is looking for, rather than having a sponsor attached to it with a set scope or idea. So this is a project that's going to need some help if the LPC sees fit to move it along throughout the process. And the first step would be identifying a sponsor and a location, working with ENU Builds as well, who did put together the proposal. So just sorry to harp on this, but eventually this gets to a place where your committee is, the, where you're as a consultant, you're recommending to the committee things that are viable and not. So currently you wouldn't recommend this. So for EMU or whoever, you'll go back to them and to try if they're interested in moving it forward, they'll work with you to make this a viable project. I mean, I'm not sure what you want from us now in that there's nothing here to, for us to really talk about yet. Yeah, I mean, I think to, to Christy's point, this is a project that um, did not have the same level of detail, perhaps, as some others. Mm -hmm. But I think that your feedback regarding, you know, how is it transformative? How is it catalytic? That is helpful. And I think we can bring that back to the project sponsor and say, we understand that this is a community need. The DRI program is very focused on um, catalyzing, you know, new investment or continued investment in the downtown area. Um, could this be a good fit for this funding or, or would it perhaps not be as competitive as other projects? And in your experience, uh, first, there, I think there's, there's a minimum project size, right, of 100,000? Is that correct. right? Okay. Yes. In your experience, has the state ever funded a community garden? And if so, sort of, it'd be helpful to understand what the what the yardsticks are for that. That's something we can look into for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Can I, I'm having a hard time raising my hand. I, my screen's oh. doing weird things, but can I talk about the word transformative for a minute? Yes, and then I see Peter and Lindsay have hands up. Uh, I think you have to ask yourself, could it be transformative for people that live here, not just transformative in an economic way for the village in this big macro way, but transformative at a community level for the people that live here. And, um, you know, we do have a community garden, but you have to drive there. It's miles away on the, out in the town. This is not accessible. So how can we bring the benefits of teaching people, you know, about nature and plants and growing and, and, and sustenance and, and cycles of nature and all that stuff. That could be transformative um, for young people in this community, if perhaps paired with culinary arts or something like that. So transformative, I think it could potentially be catalytic. Again, it depends on what context we're using here. Okay. Peter, Lindsay, you had your hands up next. I just, I feel like we need to differentiate between projects that just make it nicer to live in Austin and projects that are going to create a commercial tax base, um, encourage investment and so forth. This is a project that makes it nicer to live in Austin. Um, a playground in the center of Austin would also make it nicer to live in Austin. You could go down a long list of things that we could add that would make it nicer to live in Austin. I, my, my, my sense of what our goal here is, is that that's not it. Um, Oh, interesting Sorry, to get everybody, just, everybody's perspective. I, I, I love this. I think we could have stone barns in downtown Ossining. Um, there's nothing like gardening and healthy food. And obviously you need a sponsor. We do um, community gardens in, in Port Chester in our schools. Um, and I think this is just like a no brainer. Wouldn't take up a lot of space. Um, inexpensive. And, and the question is, you know, do you have the workforce, uh, volunteer support that you need to maintain it, I, I suspect that you would. Thank you, Lindsay. Stone Barnes and Austin, guys, love it. <laughs> All right, I had Kim and then Brent. Um, I, I've heard, you know, some interesting things, uh, ideas around this that could, I think, raise it to the level. Um, I don't think the garden in and of itself does that. Um, if it came packaged with with stone barns or if it came packaged with, you know, a culinary school or something like that, um, I, I think it that might elevate it to the level where it is both transformative and, and catalytic. Um, I, I agree with you, Peter. It's a it's a, something that would be great for the community where the gardens are located now are inaccessible to many, many people. We have a limited number of square feet within the DRI area. Um, as, as this proposal stands right now, I, I don't think this, this fits. That's just me. Okay, I see a couple more hands. Um, I'll ask if folks make comments fairly briefly, just in the interest of time. Um, I think uh, Marlene, Brent, did you wanna to speak to this? Yes, just Brent, a, Marlene, Seth. A, a real quick question about who will actually manage this garden. I think management, will this fall to the village to take this on? Or um, it's a question uh, that will come up because I, I trust the volunteers will be great, but ultimately somebody's got to manage the volunteers. And so I think uh, that's just a question I have. Brent, thank you for raising that. And again, before we spend too much time on this, we have a lot of projects to go through. Um, a community garden is something that it can be considered in very many ways from something very simple to something that Stone Barn sponsors. But without that information, I don't know that we can fully uh, evaluate this much further. And I, I do hope that in the amount of time left, which is about an hour that we can get through the other 14 projects. So um, I think this is something we'll have to go back to the project uh the project uh yeah the project concept leaders yeah, here yeah, so yeah yeah okay is it all right if we move on folks okay i'm seeing nods all right great thank you 
you can also put your, if you have any questions, you could put them in the chat. We will be taking the chat, all those questions in the chat with us after this meeting and delineating and uh, looking at those questions as well to present to the sponsor. So feel free to put your questions in there as well. Okay, next up. All right, next up is the Sing Sing Prison Museum. We've received a proposal for um, a preview center. Um, as you could expect, the project sponsor is the Sing Sing Prison Museum, a nonprofit. The budget requested is $650,000. The total project cost is closer to $700,000. Um, a location for the preview center has not been determined to date. This project would align with goal four around open space, recreation, arts, and culture. Um, and for this project to progress, we would want to better understand potential project locations, as well as refine the budget to ensure that all costs are eligible for DRI funding. Um, I know that the folks may have thoughts to whether this, this project is transformational or catalytic. Um, and so I'll, I'll open the floor for, for folks to weigh in. Um, this is Erica. I, I, I like this project. Um, I've been following it for a while. I've been, um, you know, um, lucky to tour the site. I, I do think that it's um, catering mostly to uh, tourists. Will it have ancillary um, community benefits for the, um, the, the residents of Ossining? Yes, um, but I, I'm not 100% sure that um, I'd like to see this giant chunk of money. Um, I, I'm not sure that the amount is correlates with the um, community benefit considering that the I'm not sure. That's all I would have to say. Okay, got it. So maybe that's a question about community benefit. Ms. Kim, um, somebody said to me a long time ago, if you're from Austin, the prison is the last thing you think of. If you're not from Austin, it's the first thing you think of. Um, I'm excited about the museum. I think it's a way to make lemonade out of lemons, if you will. Um, I, but like Erica, I, I think I don't know enough about what, what all the money would go for. Okay, it's a question about budget. Marlene, I see you've got a hand raised. Um, I'm gonna, I, I was laughing because Kim took the words out of my mouth. If you live in Austin, the last thing you think about is the prison. Um, and for those people who live in the area, either on the upper end of the prison or the lower end of the prison, um, bringing in a center or bringing in something as large as this also has its issues and its concerns, traffic, uh, um, parking. I mean, there's a lot of other pieces to the pie. I get it that you want to make lemons out of lemonade, but I think this project doesn't also bring in the other part of the of some of the concerns that have come up over the years of sitting on the board and listening to this project go back and forth. Um, you know, will it make money? Nobody seems to know. Will it bring in any tourists? Maybe. Will it bring in some people? Yes. But, you know, is it viable enough for the village to say that this is a project that we should bring forward? I can't answer those questions, but I think that there needs to be some more vetting out before we, you know, I would say that this is going to be um, either transformative or anything else to the village um, or to the downtown area without really getting down to the nitty gritty pieces of the pie. Um, and in this case, you know, it would be nice to hear the sponsor um, kind of come forward um, to give more information on this one. Yeah, and I think that's something we can arrange to do. Um, all right, Jeff. Yeah, I was just, you just said what I was gonna say. I think this would be, one of those cases where hearing from Brent, hearing from you know the sponsor would be really helpful because um, I think there's a there's a lot of misconceptions about what this is, uh, and I think you know even though even people who've lived in Austin for a very long time, you know I think there's 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 there is real potential here for this to have a transformational ripple effect 
uh, for the community. Uh, it's really not only about tourists. It's there's there's much more to it than that. So, you know, it would be great if we can set that up. Great, noted. Yeah. So I'm hearing questions about you know the connection to community impact and community benefit, as well as viability. You know, in terms of attracting tourism or or profitability. Um, I should I should clarify that the the project um, request is specific to the preview center. And so this would be the museum's first location. Um, it would not be for the museum itself at, at the prison location. I, I think just to that, and also just understanding scale and location, that all of these things are TBD. And I know there's a budget associated with it. I, it's hard to understand how that is. So again, from hearing from the sponsor, those are some of the things that would be helpful to understand. Great, okay, we'll, we'll take all that back. Okay, in the interest of time, we'll keep moving. Okay, so um, I will speak to this one. We have received a proposal from the village for a mixed use development at the Main Street lots, also known as Market Square, and a parking structure at the Brandreth lot. The DRI funding request is $3 million. The total project cost is estimated at $25 million. This project is eligible for DRI funding. The DRI funding would be used to offset the cost of the parking structure in particular. And it's important to note that the village plans to issue an RFQ for this development proposal. Um, and so in order for the project to progress, we would want to understand um, the potential for a, a private partner to come aboard and then refine the, the program and budget. Um, I understand that this is a, a significant project in terms of budget and impact, um, but we'd like to hear from you about the potential for it to be transformative and, and catalytic to downtown Austin. Do, do we have any details about the idea for the market square redevelopment? Is it, will, will, will that in, entail the removal of the asphalt in that area and turn it into a green space? Do we have any sense of what the ultimate redevelopment goals would be? My sense is that, go yeah, ahead. I can answer that. So right now um, we'd be doing an RFQ. So how the, the mandates that we would have right now are very basic. It would be a request uh, to um, figure out a way to um, address the lack of parking there and, and that you'd have. And um, that's hence the um, garage that would tie to this project as well as to catalyze uh, support for other projects that are actually being presented today. Um, whether or not the idea would be to maintain a market square concept. So, um, ideally, we'd like to do that in the most appealing, sustainable way possible. So it could involve um, more green space or more greenery, but it would also be, um, we have heard loud and clear from the community that they want a gathering space there. So we would need to facilitate that as well for the farmer's market and the other events that we do there. And it would be, um, the development would have to be in line with the comprehensive plan form-based code for that area, which is, um, it would complement uh, what's on the other side of the street. Um, so likely mixed use. Um, and uh, we, we take other ideas, but it would have to fall into what's already been uh, designated as um, the desired look and feel of that area. And I'll just add that our understanding is that the, the Board of Trustees would need to review the RFQ and then we would share the RFQ with this group as well. I see Lindsay and Peter have hands raised. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, I think uh, parking in downtown Austin is really important and we should take advantage of this opportunity and get it done. Got it, thank you. Peter? Sorry, yeah, I've got another disclosure. I, I own the land immediately um, uh, after this uh, parking structure on Brandreth. So um, I should state that and uh, parking structure would probably negatively impact me but nonetheless, I'm in favor of it anyway, because I think we need it. I'll make note of that. Bill, I see you raised a hand and then Jeff. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure where this ends up, but to, I, I live in Mount Kisco actually, and in Mount Kisco, they created Shoppers Park, which is very similar to what this would be. It's essentially 
recognizing that uh, is a very hard to build a lot of parking on Main Street and it's not a very good use of dollars. Uh, because that space is so valuable. So having a parking garage in this location works super well. And because the aqueduct in that area is so, it's such a short walk to the village, it's a, I think it's just a wonderful opportunity to take something that could get funded by the state because I think you'll be able to show it's transformative, uh, obviously, and a great catalyst. And it's easy, easy, it's easy for me to say, but I think it's not that much work to create some renderings and a budget to make uh, the parking structure in this, that location sort of have the meat on the bones it needs. And I think it would also be great to have uh, something done in terms of a landscape drawing to show the connection from the parking structure through the aqueduct to the village. And then I think with that, it opens up so many possibilities in the Main Street area for economic development and that doesn't have to be completely baked for this to get funded. So I think it's a good idea. Great, thank you, Bill. I see hands from Jeff and then Marlene. Just, just to echo, you know, to me, I think this is one of the most important investments we could make through this effort, uh, you know, to, to unlock those, you know, surface parking lots in the heart of the community, which were, you know, half of Main Street was taken away during urban renewal. It's, it's a finally an opportunity to, to repair that damage, uh, create a real heart, uh, which I think is a goal of this whole initiative to really revitalize uh, Main Street. So uh, I am in full support of it. Thank you. Marlene? And, you know, I, I also would say I would be in support of it, but, you know, I know we're looking at the Main Street area, but if you put a parking garage on the Branded Street area, it would also transform that whole area going all the way down to the train station because there actually are two roads that lead to the same place. So, um, you know, in developing some areas behind the Main Street area, now you've gotten people to be able to go down to the um, train station, down to the Market Street area, down to um, the Hunter Street area um, from a different avenue. And I think that um, just putting a parking garage in, in a central location opens the door for more of a more transformative, and I'm going to say it that way, um, um, opening to the, um, the entire uh, Main Street downtown area. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, and I am, I do want to acknowledge that I see that folks are writing in the, in the um, panelist chat box. Thank you so much for, for that. And, and we'll be sure to note those questions as well. I see, for example, some more, um, an interest in some more detail about the Market Square site. Um, okay, so I think, I think we can move on to the, to the next. That was great feedback. Okay, so. Okay, the next project. So we received a proposal from the town of Ossining for a new performance space at the Lewis Angle Park along the waterfront. The DRI funding request and the total project cost is $150,000. This project is eligible and aligned with goal four, open space, recreation, arts, and culture. And for to move this project forward, we would need to refine the scope with the town as well as the budget based off of what the scope ends up being and just have a better understanding of what the performance space would entail. And Peter, I see you have your hand up. Just to say, I, I can't fathom what you can really build for $150,000 right now. Um, so yeah, I, I wanna have a much better understanding of what's being proposed. Okay, and um, yep, we will definitely work with the town on refining their budget. Anyone else? Brent, go ahead. Yes, I, I've had some experience with a, a performance that, that at the uh, Engel Park two years ago, just before COVID hit, and it was a great success. My own, my question would be, can it be built for, or what's being built, and as Peter suggested, and then also what are the, is it, is it a, a loss of, of open space by having uh, this performance space there? Because it is really used by a lot of people and, and it's some beautiful views of the, of the river. So I'd want to know more about it. 
just based off of what we know from the application, there is a small performance space currently. However, it is not um, conducive to inclement weather. So their plan is to remove that existing performance space and relocate it in addition to a relocation of their comfort station on the property. Um, but we'll make sure to get some more information as we refine the scope for that project and relay it to you all. Go ahead, Erica. Um, so yeah, I totally understand that, you know, when, when it rains, it's nice to have a covered space, but um, you're not really prote protecting the spectators. So I'm not really 100% sure if that's going to be you know, an effective use of resources. Just my two cents. This may Something be another where we look to see if there are examples of other successful projects that address this issue. Okay, does anyone else have anything to add? If not, we can move on to the next project. Okay, we'll move on, Catherine. Here you go. Oh, nope, that's me. So the next project is actually uh, 200 Main Street. We received a proposal for the retrofitting of this historic building at 200 Main Street from the village. The DRI funding request is $1 million and the total project cost is $1.5 million. This project is eligible and it aligns with goal two for economic development and to progress this project further, we would follow up with the village regarding the RFP that was issued by the village in late March. Responses to the RFP are due April 22nd. So we would be following up with the village to understand if responses were received and the viability of those responses to then identify a private partner in this project. Does anyone have any thoughts in regards to this project being transformative or catalytic in the downtown? I happen to think that this is a huge, um, huge asset to the community that's kind of sadly been uh, um, under underdeveloped for a long time. I just would like to get a little bit of clarity because I know right now there is some ongoing work um, and there is an RFP. So I'm just trying to understand how these three different elements are working together. What's currently going on at the at 200 Main Street and Karen, you could speak to it if I say it incorrectly, is just remediation efforts that are being uh, conducted at 200 Main Street currently. Yeah. So it's just the removal of the harm of the asbestos and other things, yeah. To bring it to standards for then someone yeah. to come in and retrofit as necessary. Exactly. So, so the RFP that the town is, has issued right now, would this money supplement so, the RFP? Yes, so the idea, so this is, is a little bit of a challenging site um, right now because of location and, and the parking, and it does require uh, some money as an adaptive reuse project. So um, in the past when it's been RFP, the, the project, you know, the, the facility, um, when there's been RFPs for this, the facility really hadn't been remediated. Um, fit up would have been, you know, expensive. And then you're, you know, again, there's another issue with convenient parking. So right now we are really trying to tee this up so it's much more attractive to the private sector. The monies that we got through the Main Street program through New York State Homes and Community Renewal was is is designed to facilitate sale to private sector so that this building can go back on the tax rolls. Um, the next phase of this would be money towards a fit up. So ideally we put out an RFP uh, trying to appeal to, um, we put out farm wide trying to appeal to people who might like to create uh, some sort of restaurant concept, entertainment concept, uh, but something that can be um, an attraction for Austin um, and, and really uh, a significant building art with a lot of history uh, at the entryway to our main street area is significant. So in this regard, once we identify uh, somebody that, that we can partner with based on the desired use of the building, the next level of funding would be going towards the fit up to facilitate that so that it makes a, a much more attractive opportunity for the private sector as well as um, for the community at large. Thank so you, Karen. The, oh, go ahead. 
So would the village continue to own this building and it would be leased out to, so we would be selling this? No, the, 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 the build, this would go back to the um, uh, private sector and would be placed on the tax rolls. Understood. Okay, Lindsay and then Marlene. Yeah, I just think to make this successful, you need the parking structure. The two sort of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I do just want to caveat because I think it's important. In addition to the parking structure, which is really critical to so much of the Main Street redevelopment, um, the separately, we're also working with the Department of Transportation to uh, narrow Route 9 in the, in the mile that it goes through the center of our village to two lanes again. And that would add some additional parking that would benefit this building as well as the Upper Crescent businesses. Um, it is a project that we're doing that strategically uh, dovetails with everything we're trying to do to not only catalyze the downtown, but to also make sure that that connectivity is extended throughout the rest of the village and up the Main Street corridor. Thank you, Karen. Um, I, um, I have to uh, applaud, applaud Lindsay because she took the words right out of my mouth um, that, you know, if we're looking at the garage project, then we're looking at that, you know, like a big circle and, you know, being able to walk from the garage to whatever ends up at 200 Main Street would be great. Um, we also have to think I, I was on the board in 2006, and we have been talking about that project since then. Um, and the biggest issue with it was the mold in the in the building and some of the remediation that has to be done. So in order to get a viable person in that building for the village to take the initial step of getting everything remediated will absolutely be transformative to that part of the village to getting someone in there to make a project work. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Marlene. Peter and then Bill. I apologize if this is not the right venue for this, but having reviewed the RFP, um, and, and I know we, we have Dana White on this call as well. I think there has to be some clarity on what the landmarking covers because there's a rear extension on that building, which is not original. And if that's not landmarked, it makes a big difference to a potential developer from the standpoint of putting terraces on top of that, with railings and, and doing a wide range of things. But some clarity on that would, I think, be helpful in bringing a developer who could viably do a project there. In the interest of time, we can take that question and get back to you, Peter. Let's go. Thanks. Bill, did you want to chime in? Yeah. Um, so I think that this is a great project and it's important. If the garage happens, this becomes much more viable than it's ever been. I don't think that the project cost of a million and a half with a million being funded by DRI, I don't think a million and a half is anywhere close to what this project will cost. So I think, I don't know where the million app came from, but when the DRI is considering funding, uh, I think it's better to leverage the dollars. So if it's 3 million, not a million and a half, we should say it's 3 million because it makes more sense to put a million dollars of quote unquote free money into a $3 million project than a million and a half dollar project. So I just would ask that somehow this gets some sort of a budget for the next time we talk. Bill, you're absolutely correct. And, and I think that that in, in filling this out, um, it was really um, a little bit of an oversight that's that really the 1.5 is basically what's going in as a subsidy, essentially. So the, the project, um, we probably should readjust the total project cost. Also, I think it'll just help the committee if there's a budget and a scope to really get our arms around what we're really talking about. We agree. But just as was said a few minutes ago by Lindsay and uh, someone after that, we can assume that if the state funds the garage, that the garage, that this project will could be shovel ready within two years. So I think that, I mean, again, having been through this in peak skill, there are certain projects that are clearly going to be the number one or number two projects. And I think we can sort of rely on that as a group with the direction of our consultants, that it's reasonable to assume that the state will approve the garage. So we can consider something like this where if there were no garage, I don't know why we'd even be talking about this as a project. And that's something to consider moving forward for the LPC in terms of projects and synergies between the projects. Which speaking of leads us to the next one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so 
Um, I, in terms of time check, I want to let folks know we're about halfway through the proposals and we have um, just under a half hour until we'd like to take public comment. Um, so we'll try and move through these as efficiently as we can. Please make use of the chat box. We see folks doing it, that's great. And if we need to find additional time to talk through the projects, we can do that. Um, so turning to this project, um, we received a proposal from the village to establish a revolving loan fund for building facade improvements. The DRI funding request is $600,000, which is the maximum that can be requested from the DRI program for a project of this type. Um, <clears throat> the uh, facade improvements are eligible uh, for DRI funding, but would be specific to commercial buildings, mixed use buildings, or multifamily residential buildings. Um, we think that this project supports the, the goal for economic development. Um, and moving forward, we would be interested in learning more about the nonprofit partner that the village would work with to administer the program. Um, with that, we can uh, ask if folks have thoughts on, on the potential for the project to be transformative or catalytic. I will say that we're also you know, thinking about how this project can um, create synergy with, with others, for example, streetscaping near Station Plaza um, and, and the redevelopment at 200 Main and, and potentially at Market Square. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to like thumb it up. I wasn't going to say anything. So okay, I'll take it. A thumbs up. <laughs> I will say this is um, we have a couple of projects coming up that are that are fairly straightforward and that we see, you know, in other DRI uh, areas as well. And, and this is one of that type. I, I sorry, I think I sent this message only to Melita and I meant to send it to the group. Um, I had some experience working with Middletown when they did a similar project. Um, what I would say is it seemed to take a really long time because the city was specking the work, hiring the contractors, and, and it, it really dragged out a long time. So I, I'm fully supportive. I think it's a great idea. Um, I just am sort of cautioning the village, I guess, that, that clearly will put some demands on their time. Got it. Okay. So we can think about implementation as a, as a follow-up question. Okay, and I saw a comment in the chat um, speaking about signage standards for commercial properties. So we'll take that with us as well. Okay, hearing no further comment, we can keep moving. Um, all right, we also received a proposal from the village to reboot the community sculpture display program for its 10th anniversary. Um, the DRI funding request is $125,000 that would cover the cost of the program. This project is eligible as a public improvement. The DRI funding would be used to purchase pieces and create the, the public art installations. Um, and it would align with goals for arts and culture, um, as well as transportation and mobility. Um, for this project to progress, we'd be interested in talking some more about the project locations. Um, and we're curious to hear from folks here about the potential for it to be transformative and catalytic in, in downtown Austin. I already see a comment saying, love this. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Peter, go ahead. Um, I, I spent a fair amount of time, money, and effort working on this with respect to the Sing St. Kill Greenway. Um, I don't think there's any need to buy artwork, and I don't know what kind of artwork you could buy with $125,000 anyway. Um, there are, you know, many, many artists who would love the opportunity to exhibit their art for free. There are foundations where in the right context, we could have a Calder on them for a couple of years. Um, so what we really need is to, to you know, create an opportunity for exciting exhibition of art, not actually buy art. 
Um, that said, I think it's very important. I think we need desperately a cultural institution in Ossining. And I think we can use our outdoor areas to create that in an exciting way that um, a lot of other places can't. And particularly the Sing Sing Kill Greenway presents an opportunity for that. Um, sort of interspersing of art and nature in that way, in that green way is exciting, um, you know, along the lines of a, a smaller Storm King or something like that. We could really have something quite wonderful in Austin that also brings about a certain amount of cohesion. As a village, one of the problems we have is we have a sort of waterfront, we have downtown, and the Twains don't meet very well. And using the Sing Sing Co Greenway as a connector is, I think, something which we could really benefit from. Yeah, and that, that speaks to the DRI vision as well, which is really connecting Main Street to the waterfront. And I think programs like this that, you know, can create that continuity would support the vision. Okay, great. I saw a comment um, about insurance coverage as well as maintenance. And, and so that's something that we'll bring to the project sponsor, which in this case is the village. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move to the next proposal. Okay, the next project is the marketing campaign. We received this proposal from the village for a marketing campaign for downtown Austin. The total uh, DRI funding request, as well as the total project cost is $150,000. And the DRI funding, <clears throat> excuse me, would be used for um, attracting residents, visitors, and businesses to Austining using digital, video, and printed materials. This project is eligible and aligns with goal two, economic development. And to further progress this project, we would have to further understand the scope of this project. What do those materials actually mean? What is the village looking to produce? And see if there is any overlap with the next project that I'll introduce about wayfinding signage, as there might be some overlap, but that's something that we could discuss and talk through. Uh, so with that, does anyone have any um, comments or feedback regarding this project? Go ahead, Brent. I think it's a great idea. I would like to see what the strategy is. It's when someone says, let's do marketing, let's do promotion. Uh, who is the market? Who are we aiming this at? Um, I, I, I definitely think Austin could promote itself more and is, is under appreciated by the outside world. But, you know, who is this when it says uh, attracting residents, the residents are here. So I just, I just would like to see what the strategy is. And the same thing with the wayfinding, which I also think would be a great improvement. Thank you, Brent. Erica? I sort of feel like if you build it, they will come. I'm not necessarily sure that we need to spend money on marketing. Um, you know, people visit Tarrytown, not because it's advertised in a magazine. Um, so I'm not really sure. I mean, we, we've seen other, I'm not, you know, without any sort of concrete framework, I'm not really sure that this is a, a good use of money. I'd like to just see us invest in the actual things that will pull people here rather than trying to drum up people to come. Okay, and as mentioned, we'll refine the scope and talk talk it through with the village. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I completely agree with Erica. I don't think it's about marketing at all. I mean, uh, you know, a post on Eater would be 50 times more valuable than us putting an ad. I don't, I can't even tell you where we would advertise, but what would that look like? I, I think it's, it's word of mouth, it's things showing up on blogs like Brownstoner in Brooklyn that drive people up here. Okay, so it sounds like a, the main question at hand is about the scope of the project. Marlene? Um, I think I'm gonna come from a different angle. Um, Austin has a lot of unique places, eateries, um, even Melita's, we just you know looked at some of her things and, um, and it's not, out in the general public. And if Austin doesn't 
doesn't push asning, then who will? Um, and I, you know, I think that if we get lost in the sauce because we appreciate what we have, but we don't tout it as much as we can. And I think if the village is looking to see what we can do to help push us to move forward with marketing our own businesses and the downtown development, things that will be going on. Um, and, you know, I don't know about printed material, but digitally, vis you know, video, um, the more that we can push it, the more people will come. We're talking about bringing people to, to the village. Um, I shouldn't have to go to Fishgill or, or somewhere else um, or Cold Springs to see the waterfront when it's right here in my backyard. Thank you, Marlene. In the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next project because as I mentioned, there might be some overlap that um, as the LPC we could discuss and also maybe further uh, talk through the scope. So we received this proposal for wayfinding signage for downtown parking and amenities from the village. The comprehensive rebranding re and installation of way wayfinding signage would be installed throughout the DRI boundary. The DRI funding request is $125,000 and the total project cost is $150,000. This project is eligible and aligns with goal one for transportation and mobility, as well as goal two for economic development. And as I mentioned, similarly to the previous project, we would need to understand the scope and identify any overlap with the marketing campaign project, as well as look, uh, take a look at the budget as well. Any feedback on this project, or is this something that we should take a look at the scope once again, maybe redefine with the village, and then we could come back. Marlene, go ahead. Just really quickly, um, I think their funding request is too low. I know with the signs that are currently in place, I think one sign is about as much as they've asked for for the total project. Um, and I, you know, so I don't know where they're going to get signs from that's going to be that cheap. But um, I think that, you know, that may be something that they need to look at. Um, that, that's my. Great, thank you, Marlene. Jeff? Yeah, just uh, quickly, I, I don't think it can just be signage. I think it needs to be crosswalks. It needs to be, you know, it needs to be all the things that are gonna make it safe for people to walk throughout downtown. I don't think just putting up signs is gonna be enough. I think it needs to be uh, more comprehensive. Okay, so it sounds like budgeting and the scope is something that we will touch base with the village on regarding this project. Anyone else? If not, we could continue on to the next project. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, um, so a similar uh, in the vein of projects that touch the entire DRI area. We received a proposal from the village of Ossining for public Wi-Fi. The DRI funding request is $400,000. The total project cost is $500,000. Um, this project is eligible for DRI funding. The funding would be used to purchase the Wi-Fi transmitters and install the outdoor access points. Um, this project aligns with both the goals for economic development as well as open space. Um, and in order to further develop the project, we would want to understand um, which private partner would be identified and then refine the locations and the budget. Um, okay, I see some hands already. I see Marlene, I don't know if maybe it's held over from last time. No, okay, <laughs> got it. Peter, would you like to chime in on this one, um, outdoor Wi-Fi? I, I, I guess I would wanna know more about this, I, you know, Personally, I don't really get it. I have data on my phone. I can put a hotspot on and use my laptop. Um, is this something which is really a catalyst? Um, I wouldn't say no, I wouldn't say yes. I just, it doesn't occur to me as something that I've ever thought like, oh gee, if only there was Wi-Fi. Um, okay, yeah, we can take that back. If there's any, any data on that minute. having been done other village centers where that really worked, I'd, I'd be interested to know it. Yep. We can take that back for sure. All right. I would just take say, I, I totally agree with Peter. I'm not sure why we really need to do this. Um, and I'm also curious who would maintain it and, and who would assume that cost. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And I, I see a comment from Kim about access to high speed internet, which is out of reach to some businesses and households and understanding, you know, if that would address the need. Okay, I think we've got some good feedback on this one. We'll go to the next. Okay, so um, we received a proposal from the village. Um, interestingly, this is actually from both the village of Ossining and the village of Patastra, which you may remember is the other DRI um, recipient within the, the Mid-Hudson region. Um, this project would uh, be for a pilot project to implement ferry service on one day each weekend from May 1st to October 31st. Um, the DRI funding request is $100,000. Um, the total project cost is $255,000. There would be some cost sharing here with the village of Haverstraw. Um, and the project is eligible. The funding would be used for marketing as well as subsidizing a portion of the cost of each ferry ticket. This project aligns with the goals for transportation and mobility as well as economic development. Um, and for the project to progress, we'd like to refine the budget together with the ferry operator um, and with both villages. Curious to hear from folks uh, for their feedback and questions on this project. See a hand from Peter. I feel like this project is more about have straw than it is about us. Um, we're a lot easier to get to than them. I, I, so I, I feel like shouldn't shouldn't they be the proposing party, not us? And and is that relevant as a comment? I don't know. Well, we'll take it as a comment for sure. <laughs> we could, I mean, think about community benefit, right? To both the village of Have straw and the village of Austin. Yeah, I think I think they benefit. And, and I don't, not sure how we do. So I think this is important. This is a joint, um, this is a joint proposal. So it mirrors what's being asked in, um, in Havistraw. So I, I just want to make sure that that's, it is a joint proposal and it would be matched by Havistraw as well, which is a little bit of the disadvantage of not maybe having the sponsors present. But um, it, the, there is a, potentially uh, more depth to this. And I think that's where we're missing some of the nuances of what makes these valuable to the partners versus what doesn't. So um, perhaps uh, I'm just going to suggest this now because I think it's needed at the uh, we, we schedule another meeting in between now and the May meeting so that we can get the sponsors. Um, and I do strongly recommend the sponsors are at the 30th for the public meeting. Okay, I think we had a couple of other comments. I see Kim and Bill have hands raised. I think, you know, this only works if there's something at either end of the boat ride that people want to get to. Um, and so, you know, I just remember years ago, the ferry go round and getting on the ferry and going to Haverstraw and getting across the river. And it was, first of all, a flat walk to the downtown area and the downtown was hopping. And then you came back on the boat and you got to Ossining. And once you dragged yourself up the steep hill, there was nothing going on. So, you know, this really only works if there are desirable things to see and do on either end of it. And I, I see these dates May 31st through October 31st. I sure wouldn't vote for it if that was this year um, because I don't think we have the attractions on this end to, to get people on the boat. So if some of these other projects go forward and we have this beautiful art walk along the, the Sing Sing Kill and we have you know, some new things developing up at the top of the hill, then, then perhaps people will get on the boat to come and see it. But at the moment, I, I don't know why they would cross the river. Thanks, Kim. I think that does raise an interesting point about project sequencing to ensure synergies. Um, and so as the, the project list becomes more developed and, and fleshed out, 
um, I think we would want to be thinking about when you time ferry service expansion in connection to potential other projects moving forward. Um, Bill, I think you had a hand raised for this one. Yeah, I mean, as presented, is this even an eligible cost? I didn't think the DRI would fund operating costs for anything. I thought it needs to be capital dollars. Yes, that, um, go ahead, Susan. <laughs> sure, so um, we've been talking about this um, internally at the state and it's, we're thinking this is more of kind of a marketing and branding campaign for both communities, um, understanding, you know, what the costs, you know, look like, but really trying to promote the waterfront um, and downtown revitalization for both communities. So it falls under that category. But still, how does it, how does the state fund that? Or are you saying they would fund something here that they historically haven't funded? That's what we're saying at this point, yes, that it's been determined to be eligible. Okay. The, the pilot program component of it. Correct, so it, it is a not, a, yeah, that's a great point, Karen. It is not a long-term, it is for this one particular year to help demonstrate demand and um, interest in such a service. Yeah, so, you know, again, it's, it's um, a concept that I think requires more explanation from both Havistraw and Osning and, and the state as well, because this does fall into more of the regional aspect of regional uh, economic development. Um, but um, again, I think we'll just uh, get into that later. And I think the questions um, and making sure that this isn't a ferry ride to nowhere are, are apt and, and need to be considered. Okay, great. Um, we would like to move to um, public comment within the next five minutes. So I think we can um, talk about the next project. And then if we um, need to come back to the remaining three, we can schedule time to do that. Oh, and I'm talking about this one. <laughs> All right, so we received a proposal from the village to extend um, the pier. The DRI funding request is $1.5 million. Um, the total project cost is also estimated at 1.5 million. Um, this project is eligible for DRI funding. The project aligns with goals around transportation and mobility, um, economic development, as well as open space. Um, in order for this project to progress, we would want to learn more about um, the other funding sources that, that have been identified in connection to this project um, and refine the budget and, and the scope. Um, we can pause here and see if folks have any uh, feedback or comments on, on this project. Um, we thought it was important to sort of present these consecutively between village service and the peer extension. I'm not sure if Bill's hand was up from before or if it's up this time. Yeah, good question. Bill, would you like to speak about the peer extension or is that left over from the ferry service? Uh, well, both. So okay. my only, <laughs> this is a great project. It just, I don't think, we just need a lot more meat on the bones of what it is. Um, it seems also that a million and a half dollar request on a million and a half dollar project cost, I don't understand how that, makes any sense. Yeah, I think we need to, to refine that because we do understand that some portions of the project have already been funded by a DC grant um, and that they are seeking other for funding sources as well. Catherine, we only have a couple of projects left and I think it would be unfair not to go through all of them. So I, I understand we have time constraints, but I, I think we need to finish that and extend a few minutes more for public comment. If folks are able to, to stay on the line, then, then we could extend past 2 p.m., perhaps to, to 2.10 or 2.15 to accommodate the remaining projects and public comment. Is that all right? Okay. Um, all right, so moving to the next project. Christy, I'll kick it over to you. Well, yes, I'm having some, okay, here we are. Okay, so we received a proposal from the village for upgrades to the community center located at 95 Broadway. The DRI funding request is $2.5 million, whereas the total project cost is $6.1 million. This project is eligible and aligns with goal four for open space, recreation, arts, and culture. 
As the project readiness states, this project is fully formed in the sense that the village has partnered with a design firm to draft plans for the proposed upgrades to the community center, and the village has put together a preliminary budget. The next steps would be to work with the village to further understand and possibly refine their budget as necessary. And as you can see here, there are some renderings that were put together by their design firm um, on the slide. Any comments on this project? We have one project uh, that is next, and that would be the last one, so everyone has an idea. Is there a source of funding for the total, the, the balance of the total project? There are other funds that are secured. Karen, do you want to speak to those? So we, we already have um, a, a SAM grant for a half a million dollars committed to this project um, that we're working on in a parallel path. This is something that the Board of Trustees and, and if Trustee White wants to come in as well has committed to. It's something that we've been talking about regardless. So these are plans and that's why we have the drawings ready that were on deck for, um, uh, for you know, that these are improvements, some of them structural, some of them cosmetic that need to be made. Uh, I think that that one of the you know things is these are still gross estimates. We have to go to we have to do a design and build phase. We have to do get hard estimates. <laughs> There's always an opportunity for value engineering throughout that process, but we're we're anticipating funding the entire project. I don't know if Trustee White wants to add anything on behalf of the board. Um, you know, I think that the community center is really going to be uh, is really a centerpiece. I know for the mayor, it's very, very important. Um, so I'm going to speak for her here, um, where she believes this is catalytic and transformative for the community. Because I think that we're talking a lot about transformative and catalytic economically and growing our economy and all this stuff. But that is not the only definitions of catalytic and transformative that we're talking about. And if you go back and look at the DRI video that we made, that we focus as much on helping our community as we do helping our economy and our growth and our commercial tax base and all that stuff. So I just wanna say that that is very important. And this is the centerpiece of that. And uh, we really want to bring this, you know, now with our youth bureau to a place um, where it changes the lives of our young people and provides programming, uh, bigger, bigger facilities. You know, this is a really important space for our for our community, for all the residents of the community, for anybody who has a, a past, like my husband who goes swimming all the time when he can. So um, yeah, this is an important project. I Thank just you, want Dana. to address the comment too. There, you know, there's a lot more uh, detail that goes with most of these projects. Again, um, so you know, we we really will find a way, and I think maybe a second meeting is necessary to go deeper dive and and also flesh out some of the projects based on the comments here. Um, but again, this is something that the village was committed to prior to getting the DRI money. I think the DRI money enhances it. Um, transformational also a uh, mandate of the state is creating opportunity, job training, uh, opportunities for youth and people of all ages. Um, that is all incorporated in the plans for the community center going forward. Thank you, Karen. Okay, Bill and then Peter. Bill, are you still with us? Sorry, I was on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. So in in both uh, Nourishell and uh, Peekskill, they have new boys and girls clubs going and those are both DRI communities. In Peekskill, DRI dollars were used, a big chunk of dollars were used for uh, the boys and girls club. I think what's so important and Dana said it well, is to not forget the kids, the youth in these communities. When you're using these dollars, you're essentially to a great extent using them to, to create economic development that benefits the village, but brings in people from the outside to create that economic development. And I think it's so important to do the same with, uh, to use the dollars to create development for the people who actually live there. So I think this is a great use. I do wanna understand more about the funding 
but I think it's a great use of DRI dollars. Thank you, Bill. Go ahead, Peter. I just wanted to comment relative to the training opportunities being listed there, um, because I have certain reservations about saying that, you know, kids are going to be trained for film production, media, digital communications, and journalism. I have personal experience in these fields. These are brutal fields that even with advanced degrees, people show up and spend time cleaning mud off of boots on movie sets and things. And I would be hesitant to, you know, sell youth on a false bill of goods that they're going to do a training program and go work in movies. It's really, really hard. Um, I think culinary arts is a great opportunity. I think health healthcare is a great opportunity. Journalism, same thing. You can graduate the J school at Columbia and, you know, go run around Duluth trying to get a story. It's really, really, really difficult. And I think that we have to be honest with our kids about what the possibilities are for career possibilities based on the training that they're getting. Um, but that's a large issue. I just, reading this, it concerns me. We could bring that back to the village and discuss with them re regarding their scope and their training programs. Thank you, Peter. All right, so just in the interest of time, we're gonna move on to the last project. We have we, one more after oh, this one, Christy. We do, yeah. I apologize. We do have two more. Um, okay, so this project, this is, we received a proposal to retrofit and for restoration of the Olive Opera House located at 6367 Central Avenue. The DRI funding request is $1.5 million and the total project cost is $3.1 million. This project is eligible and aligns with goal four for open space, recreation, arts, and culture. As the project readiness states, this project is fully formed. The project sponsor has a defined scope and budget for the project. The next step would be to, uh, to be reaching out to the sponsor to understand if they initiated their permits and approvals process with the village and other regulatory agencies, as well to have a better understanding of their budget um, overall and the breakdown of their budget. This makes me do my happy dance. So much happy dancing going on when I see this. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Anyone else with any comments or feedback? And also going back to that original question about it being transformative or catalytic, I know we strayed away from that a little, but just to bring it back to the forefront. The space is amazing and you could do any, you know, number of things perform, you know, we don't, you know, we really don't have a space like like what this could be. And I'm so excited that the owner is moving forward with this and um, has a huge, especially with the parking structure, which will be like across the street, practically. Um, you know, you can really start doing some good shows, some good, whatever they end up doing here. Um, I know that there are thoughts of returning it to an entertainment and performance space. Um, I'm not sure an opera was ever actually performed in this opera house. Everybody had an opera house, any village of any, you know, scope or size or self-esteem. But I think getting this back uh, into the making it a vital part of our community, there's already a bookstore in the bottom that has opened. Um, and this is just a great, I think, a great development. Thank you, Dana. And just to a comment that came through the chat from Jeff, the bookstore will stay on the ground floor. Any other comments? Go ahead, Bill. I'll just, I'd love this project. I think this is a great example of the kind of thing that brings a buzz to a community without having to advertise. Thanks, Bill. Seth? Yeah, and I just also wanted to, I, I love this project. And we've talked a lot about local impact versus, you know, outside the community impact. And I think this one really is both, which is really, which, which is great. Great. And it also looks like in the chat, some other members of the LPC are in agreement that this is a great project and that it could be truly catalytic and transformative for the downtown. Okay, so with that, we are going to move on. Now I promise to the last <laughs> project of the list. Last but not least. Yes, last but not least, um, we received a 
project proposal from the village um, in connection to the redevelopment of 30 water streets. Um, the DRI funding requested is $375,000. The total project cost would be $400,000. The project is eligible. Um, the funding would be used to install um, environmental features such as um, fish ladders to um, improve ecology. Um, and there would also be educational and interactive signage um, through the existing and extended trail here um, near the Sing Sing Kill Greenway. Um, in terms of alignment with DRI vision and goals, we felt that the, the signage was indeed aligned with the vision and goals. Um, the environmental features themselves, um, we were unsure of their uh, alignment with the goals. Um, and, and this is a project that we think is, is fully formed. There's a budget that's been, um, that's been created. Um, and in terms of next steps, I think we would want to understand uh, more about alignment with the DRI vision and goals. Um, so I'll leave this uh, open to the LPC to weigh in on whether the project as defined with, with signage and environmental features um, would be uh, transformative or catalytic to downtown Austin. I'm just curious about the feasibility of putting fish ladders in since the, the water kind of exits through a culvert. I'm not really sure how I'm understanding how we could even integrate that type of structure at that location. Uh, I'm all for it because I do think that the Hudson really is dying a death from a thousand cuts. Um, and anything that we could do to improve the ecosystem of you know, our greatest asset is always something that I'm, I'm welcome to be hearing more about. I would just like to hear more detail. And also just curious, is, is Wilder Bart, Bart Walter also putting up some money to match the funding for this? Or is this just all Will this be entirely funded from the DRI? The, the funding request is the 375,000 and the total project cost is 400,000. We could circle back on the difference between those so two. The, I just wanna be clear. So this would be an enhancement. Um, Wilder Bolters uh, is contributing a lot of other public features to the project um, in, in the entirety project. So this project doesn't really tell that story. Um, so uh, there's certainly, in terms of the entire project development for 30 Water Street, there's, there's a fairly significant developer match um, uh, baked into this, um, but certainly facilitating this as well. Yeah, I, th I think we should expand the, the dollar value of this whole project since we're putting millions of dollars into the Greenway to make it happen. I think, and I think we should have, if Paul is, Karen, if Paul can explain this, I think you should have Paul at the next meeting to explain what this is. Uh, Paul, Paul, it is Paul's brainchild, as is the whole Sing Sing Kill walkway. So we will definitely uh, bring our uh, village engineer on board to talk about exactly how those fish are going to climb the ladders in the kill. I, I openly admit that this is outside my area of expertise. <laughs> um, Peter, I think you had a hand raised. Yeah, just to, just a comment. Should should we not have Riverkeeper somehow involved in this conversation? They are a stakeholder. Yeah, they are. So I'm just saying it seems like they they're can, they're right there. And this them is, on this is totally their well. Absolutely. All right. So with that, I think we've made it through our project list. We're Catherine, before we go to the questions, this is really quick. We yeah. have a public presentation on the 30th where we want to be able to present these projects and have people respond in a two hour time frame. Uh, we'll probably extend it with staff and have staff there longer. This will be a public meeting with people, you know, in person at the uh, community center. We'll have boards on everything. But I think it's it's kind of clear from this meeting that if you guys are having trouble responding to this, the public's going to be even one more step removed is going to have trouble if we go the way it is now. Um, would it be possible to set up, I want to just recommend that doing the uh, next LPC meeting before the 30th with enough time to update materials, if that's something that either everybody or a subcommittee can do, would be really helpful to making sure that we have a good presentation on the 30th. 
Yes, I agree. And I think, I think, you know, we, we are on board with involving project sponsors in sharing more information about these projects. You know, it, it was a challenge to get through these projects in, in two hours, and we were deliberately brief um, and shared limited information in the interest of time. Um, I think that we, we will want to think strategically about how to meet to discuss these projects in more detail. Um, I don't think that two hours will will do it. And so um, it may be multiple meetings, right? Um, so let's let's talk together about how to best do that. Um, but I, I hear you loud and clear that going into the community meeting at the end of the month, we very much want people to be able to um, to have the level of information necessary to to weigh in and and share feedback. Okay, so looking ahead, we have um, just one or two slides about, how we will continue to evaluate these projects going forward. Um, so at LPC meeting four, um, VHB will um, ask the LPC to evaluate the projects using the following criteria. So for today, we mostly discussed transformational and catalytic potential, but we're going to include more criteria going forward. Um, we want to speak to economic benefits, we want to speak to community benefits, and we want to dig deeper on project feasibility. Um, we will next week share a Microsoft form with the LPC to solicit feedback on how we define economic benefits and community benefits in particular. Those um, can be, you know, geared toward um, each community, and so we want to understand um, what is most appropriate and the best fit for downtown Austining in terms of economic benefit and community benefit. Um, and then in addition to presenting the, the projects from the preliminary project list, we will also share this criteria with the public at community meeting two, so they have an understanding as to how you, the LPC, will continue to evaluate these projects going forward and ultimately recommend a slate of projects for funding. Okay, so uh, as Karen said, we have community meeting two on Saturday, April 30th. It will start at noon in the community center. We are uh, trying to uh, have a, a start and end time that will allow for sufficient time for everyone to review and comment on the projects. Um, we expect it will end somewhere between two and 4 p.m. Um, we'll have LPC meeting four on Thursday, May 5th. That's another midday meeting and LPC meeting five on Tuesday, May 24th. Um, that's an evening meeting. And we'll circle back to folks about the best way to dig deeper on these projects prior to the community meeting. Okay, so Alan, uh, let's go ahead and start the public comment session. Um, we will run through 2.15. Um, we ask that folks please try and limit your question or comment to two minutes. Um, and a quick reminder again that this meeting is being recorded. So if you would like to offer a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom um, and we will uh, unmute you and allow you to speak. Also, as you can see on the screen, <clears throat> or some of you may not, we do have a star nine. Uh, for the telephone, which is how you would like to raise your hand, we do have at least one call in person. So we do have a hand up, our first hand up, and that's Mark Fry. So Mark, you should now have a command to unmute your line. And when you do, the floor is yours. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, hi, it's, <clears throat> it's Mark Fry. Um, uh, let me uh, say, first of all, uh, I'm very well impressed with the extraordinary job that all of the 15 members have done. Um, I was very happy to uh, see, especially a uh, little disclosure here, Peter Chernoff is not only a friend, but he's my landlord. But in spite of that, I think he made some outstanding comments on a lot of the projects um, that are tangentially important, but may not be worthy of, of funding. Um, I also wanted to, uh, to say I, I agree very much 
let me backtrack just one moment. I'm going to be involved as a developer in two or assisting developers in two projects on Main Street that have nothing to do with this, but they're certainly in, in support of those goals. So in, instead of seeing me always as the naysayer, you'll see me uh, uh, promoting uh, some goals with a, a different hat on. Um, and the three projects I wanted to call out, um, I'm very much in favor of the Brandreth parking uh, proposal because there is a shortage of parking spaces in the entire downtown. Uh, there can't be a real success on Main Street um, or anywhere unless there's substantial additional parking. I can walk to Main Street, I'm one block away, but if I drive there on Saturday night, I can't find a parking place. I've been a million times. When I drive there at four in the afternoon, I can't find a parking place. Um, so uh, I think that's uh, something that will be supportive of a great number of projects in the downtown. I believe the Olive Opera House, of course, I think I've told many of you, I was deeply involved in Terrytown for 20 years working on the downtown. We, I think we made it, but the, the music hall was of tremendous importance. Um, and having, uh, ver I very much agree, if you build it, they will come. That Olive Opera House project, I think, is uh, outstanding. I see other opportunities for small jazz clubs, uh, acoustic guitar, whatever. But, but that kind of attraction, Olive Opera House, I think, is a great project. I agree with Bill Bolter you, very much. Mark, yeah. we're, we're, we've just passed two minutes, but please mention the third project that you okay. are wanting to Okay, I think the community more. center, I agree with all of those who spoke in favor of it, um, because I think that uh, while it may not be something that attracts new folks, it's very important for the community and can stand on its own merits. So thank, thank you for allowing me to conference. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. All right, um, looking through the list, I don't see any other new hands raised. Again, star nine for our one telephone call in person if you'd like to raise your hand. Um, Mark, your hand is raised. I'm not sure if you meant to try to unraise it. I'll get back to you in a second. Um, Jacqueline Tyler. Uh, Jacqueline, you should now have the ability to unmute your line. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Jacqueline Tyler from Nexus Creative. Um, we wanna thank the committee for their time today. Uh, we just wanted to understand, will the full submissions be available to the public for review prior to the public meeting? Hi, Jacqueline, that's a great question. Um, I think that we are hoping to refine the project information that was provided. So it may not be that the exact submission that was uh, received through the call for projects would be available, but we would refine some of that information and make more detailed information available before the meeting. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um... All right, I don't see anything in the Q&A. Uh, the members of the attendees, attendees of uh, the public, you can use the Q&A to submit a question or comment. Also raising hands. I don't see any other hands raised at the moment. We'll do a final last call for that to make sure everyone has an opportunity. Okay, I don't see anything net new. Um, so with that, I can turn it back over to uh, Catherine and Christy. Okay, thank you all. And the public comment concludes our third local planning committee meeting. Thank you so much to everyone for joining this afternoon. Um, all the LPC members, the, the state team, as well as Karen. Um, we will go ahead and, and share this meeting recording with you as well as a meeting summary. Um, and we will be in touch about um, speaking with project sponsors prior to the community meeting on April 30th. I'll also put in a plug. We'll have materials to promote the community meeting next week. Um, so please share those far and wide. Um, and we'll also be making uh, opportunities available for folks to give feedback online. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks everyone.